converting a, a number from complex number form to trigonometric form. Okay, so here we have an example. We're asked to write the number negative 5 plus 6i in trigonometric form. So there's a few things we need to know about before we try to do a problem like this. Um, one thing that we need to know about is how these are represented okay, in a plane. So we do graph complex numbers, but rather than having, um, but our x-axis okay, is the real numbers part of your number, and the y-axis is the imaginary part. Okay, so this point negative 5 plus 6i would be the point negative 5, 6 on our graph. This is our x and this is our y. So if we were to graph this, we would go negative 5 on the real axis and then positive 6i. Okay, and that's where the point would be located. Now the reason that is important is so that we know what quadrant we're working in. Because as we write this in trigonometric form, we will have a cosine theta and a sine theta. Okay, and that will make a difference as to what angle we use depending on what quadrant we're in. Now this one is in quadrant two. We went negative on our x, positive on our y. Okay, the other thing to note is here we're using the complex number in the form x plus yi. So again, this is the x and this is the y. The x is the real part of your number. The y is the imaginary part or the part with the i. Right. So the first thing we need to do after we've established what quadrant we're actually working in is then we are going to find r. Okay. Because we are going to end up writing this in trigonometric form. It looks like this r times cosine theta plus i sine theta, or this is the abbreviation for it, r cis theta. This is cosine i sine theta, okay? But we need our r, and then we need to find theta, and then we'll be able to write it in that form. Now, r is the absolute value of your complex number, okay? So remember to do that, you do the square root of each portion squared. So it would be the square root of negative 5 squared plus 6 squared. So our x squared and our y squared. Negative 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. I go ahead and find their sum. 25 plus 36 is 61. So my r is the square root of 61. Okay, I'm just going to leave it in that form. The next thing I need to do is find theta, my angle. Okay, what is this angle is what I'm trying to find out. Well, to do that, we use tangent. Okay, so remember on the unit circle, sine was the x value of our point. Co excuse me, cosine was the x value of our point. Y was the sine value. And tangent is sine over cosine, or y over x. Now, we've used that in the past for other things we've done in trigonometry. We're using it again here. Okay, again, y is the sine, was the sine value of a point. x was the cosine value. Okay, tangent is y over x. So, again, we're using our numbers here. y is the i part, so we have 6 over x is negative 5. So the tangent of theta is equal to negative 6 fifths. We want to know what theta is. So how do we find that? We do the inverse tangent. Now you can do this using radians. You can do it using degrees. It works either way. Just make sure you specify what you're using. If it's degrees, write out. I use degrees. So Put your calculator into whichever mode you want to operate in. I'm going to go ahead and operate in degrees. So we're going to do the inverse tangent of negative 6 fifths. So we can find out what angle has a tangent of negative 6 fifths. Now, when you do that, your calculator will give you negative about negative 50. I get negative 50.19. I'm just going to round that to negative 50, which is down here. Okay. But 
remember we graphed it and we're working with the angle up here. This angle also has a negative tangent and what I've just discovered is it's the angle that's 50 degrees away from this axis that's at 180. So to find my angle I'm going to take 180 minus 50 and I get 130 degrees approximately because I rounded that angle. Okay, So my theta is 130 degrees. That's why it's crucial that you actually take a look at your numbers and see which quadrant you are in. That will make a big difference in what you do with your angle because you can use your calculator to find the initial angle but then you need to find out what the angle would be in the specific quadrant you are in. Okay, And it is 130. So now we are going to write this in trigonometric form. It says we're supposed to put r, so our r was the square root of 61, times cosine theta, so cosine 130 was our theta, plus i sine of our theta again, which was 130. Okay, I'm going to put degree symbols so I know those are in degrees. This is my number, negative 5 plus 6i in trigonometric form. The shortened version for writing that is you just put your r and then the letters cis, and that stands for cosine i sine that we had in here, and then you write what your angle was. Okay, So your answer may be written in either of these forms either root 61 times cosine 130 plus i sine 130 or root 61 cis 130 degrees. r cis theta is our shortcut way to write the answer. Okay, so there's one example. I'm going to do a few more. Okay, so hold tight. This time we want to write negative 1 minus 3i in trigonometric form. Alright, so remember in this number, this is our x value and this is our y value on our graph. We want to graph it so that we know which quadrant we are working in. Okay, So negative and negative, that means I go negative 1 and then down 3. So I am working in quadrant 3 and that's going to be important when I find my angle theta. We need to find r and we need to find theta so that we can write our answer in this trigonometric form. To find r, you do the square root of your x squared, so negative 1 squared, plus your y squared, so negative 3 squared. That gives me the square root of 1 plus 9 is equal to root 10. So my r is the square root of 10. To find theta, we go, okay, well, the tangent of that angle theta should be y over x. Our y was negative 3, and our x was negative 1. So we know that tangent of theta equals positive 3, because negative 3 divided by 1 is, excuse me, negative 1 is positive 3. We do the inverse tangent of both sides. Okay. The inverse tangent of 3, and it gives me 71.56. I'm going to round that off to 71.6 degrees. Now that's the answer that it gave me because that is the initial, remember our range for tangent was here, okay, between negative 90 and 90 degrees. Okay, So it gave me in the first quadrant 71.6, but I want that angle but down here in the third quadrant. So I want the angle that is 71.6 degrees away from this axis that was at 180. I'm past 180, so this time I'm going to take 180 and add my angle so that I end up in the third quadrant. So 180 plus 71.6. So again, you can see how important it is that you graph your point to see which quadrant you are in. Otherwise, I would have used the wrong angle. I need to use 251.6. Okay. So now I know that my r is the square root of 10, my theta is 251.6, and now I can write it in this trigonometric form. It's supposed to be r, so my r was the square root of 10, times um, cosine of theta, which I found my theta was 251.6, plus i 
times the sine of my theta, 251.6. This is one form in which they may write it. The other form is the shortened, the abbreviated version, which we just put our R, which is root 10, the letters C, I, S, and then our angle theta, which again was 251.6. And there you go. That is two different ways to write this answer. Okay, I'm going to do two more that are a little different. They look a little different. This one wants me to write the number negative 2 in trigonometric form. Well, it hardly looks like a complex number, but it is. It just means that the i part is 0. Okay, so if we were to graph that, negative 2, we go 2 to the left, up and down 0, so we're right here. All right, so this one, um, let's go ahead and find our r. Okay, that's basically our, our, what's the distance from 0, 0 here? It's 2. Or you can go ahead and calculate. You do your x, the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we'd have the square root of negative 2 squared plus 0. There was no y. Negative 2 squared is 4 plus 0 is 4. All right, so there we are. Our r is 2. Now, when you try to find your theta, um, you can use, again, that the tangent theta is y over x, or you can go, what is the measure of the angle if I end up right there on that axis? That is a 180-degree angle. Okay, so my theta is 180 just from observation. Again, you can calculate it the same way we did the others. You write down tangent theta is y over x, so y is 0 over 2. Tangent theta equals 0, and then you would go... If you did inverse tangent, it would tell you that theta is 0, but then again, you need to look and see where you're supposed to be, and it's the other angle that's on the axis, which is 180. Okay, so that is a little tricky there. But you can just see it from observation. All right, so if we write this in trigonometric form, we have our r and we have our theta, so we're good to go. Our r is 2, so we have 2 times the cosine of 180 plus i sine 180. And you don't need to calculate cosine 180 or sine 180. You can just leave it this way. Or we can write it as 2 cis 180. Okay, two different ways to write that answer correctly. All right, here's one last one. Similar type of example, but this time we just have the imaginary part. We don't have the real part. So again, this is just as if we have 0 real plus 1i. Okay, so if we were to graph that, okay, we would go right and left 0, but we would go up 1i. So we're right here. So for our angle, you can see what would the angle be. It would be a 90 degree angle. Okay, and what would your r be? Well, it's a distance of 1. You can still use the traditional method of doing the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we have 0 squared plus 1 squared is 0 plus 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So our r is 1. Our theta is 90 degrees. Okay, again, you can use the traditional method, but what would happen is you would get tangent theta equals 1 over 0, so you'd want to know where tangent is undefined, and that's at 90 degrees and 270. Um, we want the one right here. <laughs> Alright, so there we have our parts, either by observation or by using our traditional methods. Um, now we just need to write it in trigonometric form. So our r was 1 cosine 90 plus i sine 90, and yes, I know the cosine of 90 is 0. Or we can also write it as r, which is 1, cis 90 degrees. We probably would not write that 1. It would probably just be cis 90 degrees. So here are